Now we revisit the multiple instance octoprint install. Last time we installed four instances of octoprint on one Raspberry Pi to give us the ability to stream G code to multiple 3D printers while only using one octoprint server. I've had a lot of questions concerning this config, mainly around the addition to webcams so that you can monitor your 3D prints. When you add webcams, things get a little tricky because of the power and the I.O. required to support the cameras. I've done a lot of testing and I think I've come up with a config that works for this scenario. So we'll take three 3D printers, three webcams, one Raspberry Pi, and we'll get them all configured to work together to have three separate instances of Octoprint where you can control and monitor your 3D printers. Note that I have tried to scale this up even larger, but if you go any larger than this, it's about all the Pi can support and things go not so well. So before we get started, we are going to be using the CR10, the TiVo Tornado, and the ANET E10. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B and a number 10 SD card for added speed. Note that I'm using the native ports on the Raspberry Pi for all the printers. All the cameras will be on a USB hub that's on the additional port. This is so that streaming G-code gets priority and I.O. versus the cameras that are on the hub. It's more important to get the G-code right, not the camera. I'm also using a 5 volt 3 amp power supply. As with all Raspberry Pi projects, it's very important that you have enough power for this setup. I'm using an inexpensive passive USB hub, meaning it's not powered, it's four ports, and three Logitech C270 webcams. I chose the C270 because they're inexpensive, they work with Octoprint right out of the box, and they have internal serial numbers. I highly recommend you use cams that have serial numbers. This makes defining them much easier. You can use other attributes other than the serial, but none of them are as predictable. All links to these items are in the description below. If you want to get started using Octoprint or you want to do the multiple install, you can check out the first video here. Today's video starts where the multiple install left off. All the instances are already installed, now we just need to add the webcams. So let's get started. First thing we'll do is we'll plug our USB hub in the leftover USB port. Then we'll use PuTTY to log in via SSH to the Pi. Username Pi, password Raspberry. Then we'll start a tail on the messages log. This will show all the activity as we plug in the cameras. We'll plug in the camera that's going to support the E10 first. Note when the camera's plugged in, it's going to put out this serial number. All these cameras are the same, so they're all going to have the same ID vendor and ID product. The serial number will be specific for each camera. Next, we'll plug in the camera for the Tornado. Serial number for that camera. Then plug in the camera for the CR10. Serial number for that camera. Now that we have all the cameras plugged in and we know what order they were started and their serial numbers, we can now build our USB file. We'll control C to get out of the log. We'll change directory into etc udev rules.d. Then we'll edit 99-usb.rules with nano. Remember, you need to use sudo. So in this file, we already have our printers named and assigned to specific USB ports, but now we need to add our cameras so they're assigned to the correct printer. We need to add a video for Linux line for each camera. Since all the cameras are the same, all the ID vendors and ID products will be the same, but they will have a unique serial number. You'll also need to create a SIM link. For each one of these, I'm just going to create a SIM link called video in the printer name so we know which one's which. So the first camera that we plugged in was the ANET E10, so we'll call it video ANET E10. The second one was the tornado, so we'll call it video tornado. And the third one was the CR10, so video CR10. If you're in PuTTY, you can scroll up to get to the messages file that we tailed and grab the serial numbers. So the first camera we plugged in was 1.1.4, and its serial number is right here. So we'll scroll back down to that file, and we'll paste that serial right here. 
That's the first camera we plugged in and we assigned it to the ANET E10. Scroll back up. The second camera we plugged in is 1.4.2. The serial is right here. And that one's assigned to the Tornado. Scroll back up one more time. The last camera we plugged in, 1.4.3. Its serial is right here. And that's assigned to the CR10. Control X to exit. Y to save. Press enter. Now you can reboot the Pi. After the Pi is restarted, we can reset the session and log back in. Do an ls slash dev to verify the devices. And now you can see our new video devices assigned to each printer. Now we need to build a webcam file for each webcam that we use. So let's change directory into root bin. Take a look at what's in there. This is the file that we're concerned with. So let's copy that file to create two more instances since we have two more cams. So sudo cp webcam d and we'll call it webcam d2. And we'll call it webcam d3. Now let's edit the original webcam file sudo nano webcam d. Now we need to edit this configuration file so that it knows to use the correct device on the correct printer. You can do this with device name and port number. So in your camera USB options, you'll add dash D slash dev and then the device name that we created in the udev file. Again, if you need to look at those device names again, you can do an ls on slash dev to find the device name. And then in camera HTTP options, we're going to assign it a port number. You can remove the dash in and we'll do a dash P 8080. Each camera needs to be on its own port. So we can save changes and exit from this file. Control X. Yes. Enter. And then we'll move to webcam D2. Back down to camera USB options. Add a dash D and this time we're going to use the video tornado device that we added. Down to camera HTTP options again. Delete the dash in. Dash P for port. This time we'll choose 8081. Control X. Y. Enter. And then webcam 3. Camera USB options. Dash D slash dev video CR10 for that camera device. Camera HTTP options. Dash P. And we'll use 8082. Exit and save. Now we need to add the default settings for the new cameras, webcam D2 and webcam D3. So we'll change directory into etc defaults. We'll have a look at what's in there. We already have the original webcam D file, so let's copy that file. sudo cp webcam D, and we'll do webcam D. Two, and webcam D3. Let's edit webcam D2, sudo nano webcam D2. So we need to add a 2 to the daemon name and the log name. So root bin webcam D2 and var log webcam D2.log. Exit and save. And then webcam D3 root bin webcam d3 var log webcam d3.log exit save now we need to go in and add some entries into init.d to make sure the webcam start up on reboot so we'll change directory into etc init.d we'll take a look at what's in there here's the default webcam d file again we will copy that file sudo cp webcam D, webcam D2, and again, webcam D3. Let's edit webcam D2, sudo nano, webcam D2, start with the provides line, add a 2 to that entry, go to short description, add a 2 to that entry, 
Down in the variable section, description, webcam D2. Name, webcam D2. Daemon, root bin, webcam D2. Package name, webcam D2. And then log name, webcam D2.log. Exit and save. And then three. Same thing, provides webcam D3. Short description, webcam D3. Description variable, webcam D3 daemon. Name, webcam D3. Daemon name, webcam D3. Package name, webcam D3. And log name, webcam3.log. Exit and save. Now we'll reload all the daemons with a system control command sudo system ctl space daemon dash reload. Now we need to update the defaults for the two new webcam entries. So sudo update dash rc dot d webcam two defaults. Bring that back up for the webcam three. Then we can start our new webcam processes. So sudo slash etc slash init dot d webcam d two start. And then three, start. You can make sure these instances are running correctly with a system control status command. systemctl space status space webcam d2 dot service. Active and running. And number three, active and running. A good check to make sure the settings that you changed were correct is if they're in this command that the service actually ran. Tornado. CR10. Now we need to edit the haproxy config file. This will enable us to point the browser at these specific camera devices. So sudo nano slash etc slash haproxy slash haproxy.cfg. So the first thing we need to do in this front end public block is we need to add a back end entry for each webcam we use. So we can just copy the default webcam back end entry. So we'll copy this line and we'll add it twice. So we'll change this one to webcam2 and path webcam2. Same for this one, webcam3, webcam3. Then we need to go all the way down to the bottom and add a back-end webcam entry for each port on the local host. So we'll just copy this, paste it here, we'll paste it twice, one for each camera. Now we have three. So this will be webcam2, webcam2 here. Leave the server webcam1, that's just the service name. Change your port number to the port number we use. This one was 8081. And then back in webcam3. Webcam3, we made this one 8082. And we're done. Control X, save, exit. Now once again, we reboot the Pi. Sudo reboot now. Once the Pi is back up, let's head to the browser. We'll go to the IP of our Pi. This is the default instance. We'll go into settings, pull open webcam and time lapse. This is the default stream URL for the webcam, but since we've altered these, we need to add the IP of the Pi. So just at the beginning of this line, add HTTP, colon, forward slash, forward slash, and then the IP number of the Pi, 192.168.1.181. We'll copy this line because we have to do this on the other two instances as well. So save that here. We'll duplicate this tab. We'll go to 5001. That's the second instance. We'll go to settings. We'll paste that URL in here, and for the CR10, we chose to go with webcam3. We'll save that. Then we'll go to 5002. Duplicate that tab once again. We'll go to 5002. That's the tornado instance. Go to settings, webcam and time lapse, paste that in again and we'll put webcam 2. Save. And there's our webcam on our E10. 
I've just got the cams perched on the top rail of the printer just so you get the idea. You can print whatever type of mount you like to get the perfect time lapse. Now we'll head over to the CR10, go to the control tab, and there's its webcam. Again, it's just on top of the printer. Now we'll go to the tornado, head to the control tab, and there's the tornado cam. If you need to troubleshoot these cams, you can go into settings and you can grab that URL. You can try the test button, it'll pop it open in a browser, or you can just throw it in the URL bar. Also, if you want to do time lapse on all the instances, just go back to your main instance, go to settings, go to webcams, copy the snapshot URL, and then go to your other instances, go to settings, paste that snapshot URL in there, but update the port number. So this one was on 8082. Same for the path to the encoder. Grab that encoder, paste it here. Hit save. I'll do that to the tornado as well. Encoder, snapshot URL. And this one was on 8081. Hit save. Now if you refresh the browser, you should have your time lapse tab back. While we're here, let's just go back through and enable time lapse. We'll do timed. 10 seconds should be good. We'll tick save as default. Hit save changes. And we'll do that for the other two instances. Time lapse, timed, save as default, save. Time lapse, timed, save as default, save. And now we're ready to print. So let's get some filament loaded in these printers, get some prints started, and then we'll check out some time lapses. And there it is, three printers, three webcams, one Pi, three Maker Coins. Now the cam did fall off a couple of the printers during the print, and I'm sure there's a lot of cool mounts out there on Thingiverse that you can use that were a lot better than mine, but it was just a test. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.